I was hiding. <laughs> I'm like, I've been kind of lazy recently. I think waking up at like 1 p.m. and or not getting enough sleep is just so bad for you. You like can't even you can't even like function. You know, it's actually really important for you uh, youngsters who uh, you know are night owls like I am. It's not really a good thing, to be honest. I didn't really believe my parents when they were like, hey, it's not good to wake up at noon. It's like, yeah, right, yo, I can like do 24 hours all nighters, no problem. Now I kinda I kinda get it, you know. <laughs> when you're younger, you probably can like shrug off anything, honestly. But now I'm like Yeah, I'm like not even 30, but I feel like I'm like dying when I wake up at 1 p.m. Link to Discord. Uh, can I like? Can I like create an instant invite? Is this a thing? Does this work? Does this work like that? Okay. Well, we're just gonna go through these uh, messages, yeah. Who is the best ADC in the world currently? Yo, I mean, I don't really watch um, professional games, but uh, you know the the, the classic like. Asian ones like Jackie Love or Teddy or, or Death, you know, those are they are really good. Like NA, we have like Double Lift, right? We have like, uh, and then like EU has like Perks, right? Reckless, dude. I, I don't really know to be honest, but in terms of like versatility, Perks is pretty crazy. He can play whatever bot lane. But, but, but for like traditional AD carry, is probably still like Uzi or like Jackie Love or something. I don't really know though. I can't really say because I don't watch. I don't watch uh, mini games, okay? So, yeah, Viper, yeah, 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 yeah. Upset. I, I see. I see. I don't even know these people. I don't even know how these guys play. Okay. Next question. You recently had a video called "Ooh, thank you for the sub." Dish, dish, dishwasher possum. Thank you. Wow, I can't speak English. Not even mentioning Sneaky. I mean, come on. Sneaky's really good. I'm not gonna go down the list and li name everyone though. I, I, I don't know. Is Uzi still playing? He'll probably play eventually, you know? <laughs> uh, okay, next question. You recently had a video called How to Always Outplay Your Opponent. I'm a top lane main that's been bouncing between D1 and Masters this year. Oh shit, thank you for the sub. Dark Pie. Dark Pie, thank you for the sub. Um, I mostly work on things like map awareness. Sure. Playing matchups correctly. Sure. And good mid game macro. Okay, those are pretty solid. Do you think Ted to move higher? I need to start forcing even more fights and try to outplay. Right now, I tend to only go for an outplay if I make a mistake and need to recover. All right, so the idea. So you're you're playing top lane, right? So, um, in terms of looking for an outplay, it's not that you force it and you hope that the outcome is good. It's more like let's say you're hiding in a bush and your enemy top lane on let's say it's like Kled, he uses like his bear he uses his bear claw on the minions for god what god knows what reason right and you're like oh he's missing an ability the jungle's not here their mid can't roam you know it's 1v1 i'm gonna beat him up because he literally can't win right or let's say for example um let's say you're playing tristana and they're playing like um they're playing like aatrox or something right um and we're, we're trying to outplay uh in the sense that Aatrox is gonna like three Q spam on your face. What are you gonna do about it, right? It's not that we're always looking to outplay and then like kill them. It's more like they're gonna do this thing. I can beat it with this thing, so I'm gonna go do it, right? You, you, there are th certain things your opponent wants to do, and there are certain things you want to do. So you either you know counter what they're gonna do or make sure they can't counter what you're gonna do, right? So depending on, let's say. Um, the enemy is like Pantheon, you're playing Kled, right? All right, let's use like a brute force example. Okay, Pantheon, Pantheon's missing level six. You just straight up recalls. Oh, wow, he's gonna ulti bot. So what do you do? You look bot, you prepare to TP and ulti immediately. So the instant you see that Pantheon circle show up, boom, TP comes out, right? It's not that we're always mechanically outplaying, it's that you're reading what they're gonna do and you have a response, right? So you should always be doing that. So if you're kind of lacking this, that, you know, maybe that might be the thing that you need to go up the next level. Right, doesn't always have to be a mechanical outplay. Um, what do you think the biggest difference between a professional ADC and an ADC and challenger is? Okay, a lot of things. For example, in solo queue, there's a lot of random shit going on. Like you know, in solo queue, we're very used to getting a bunch of free money somewhere. Right, a bunch of random fights happen. We can play it. You know, we can play it wild. We can play a bunch of wild fights essentially. Right. Um, the thing is though, is that 
in the scrims or professional play, there's a lot less of that. Um, and uh, <laughs> let me tell you that if you're an ADC in solo queue and you're challenging, you're really good mechanics and you're fighting all the time, when there are no fights going on and there's no random money, the game is completely different. You're like, oh, how do my champions interact with them? We have the same amount of money, maybe different item spikes, right? Maybe there's, it's, it's never really like, like oh, we, it's never really like, you know, 4v5 anymore. It's like, oh shit, it's 3v3. How did these champions, how can you leverage the smallest of advantages into space or like vision or just even, you know, winning a trade, right? Um, for example, uh, 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 before I before I come up with my example, the one I the one that was super obvious for me when I was trying out for Team Liquid way back whenever I was challenger, right? I uh, <laughs> didn't know how to play the game, uh, you know, in laning or outside of lane. So even though in the fights I got like penta kills or quadra kills, like my mechanics were really clean, I had I was minus 100 CS every game. I was like, how do how do I get the CS? I don't know. There's like usually when their fights go, when they're in solo queue, fights break out. I go there, get a shit ton of money. Then I clear waves, and in these scrims, they're like, "Hey, you know, I should go, go, go to the side lane." And I'm like, "Oh shit, what am I supposed to go there? I don't even know, right? What am I supposed to be doing? I have no idea." So that's the biggest difference: is that in Challenger, the mechanics are gonna be really good, right? But a professional ADC, there's a lot of habits that they've built up. Um, for example, when nothing is going on, they can evaluate uh, even fights like three v threes that doesn't have some insane stupidity going on, like. One side's randomly starting dragon, or one side's chasing like a monkey, right? There's actually like is like calculated, more calculated uh, or more precise fighting going on. Um, less insane mistakes that you see in solo queue. Uh, what is the best thing for an ADC player to focus on and improve? Whatever your biggest weakness is, I think. Um, what is the most mechanically difficult ADC to play? I mean, they're they're, I mean, some of them are a lot easier than others, right? But I mean, like Draven's pretty hard. Like Vayne can be hard, right? Anyone with Multiple active abilities is hard. Like Zaya has four active abilities and they can all be used differently, all right? So that's pretty hard too. So I don't know if there's the most difficult, but what do you think is more important to learn to climb out of platinum? CSing effectively? Definitely not CSing. Wave management or proper trading patterns? Dude, if you're in platinum, you just brute force the shit out of everything. Well, from my perspective, that's what I would do, right? I would just brute force, like use my matchup or my champion correctly and then they just all die right or you're just team fighting correctly if anything in platinum you don't care about any of this you just care about the pvp all right the trading patterns or even team fighting um that kind of stuff you just win your fights right it's like uh i guess an analogy would be like in csgo he's like oh you don't need strategy you just win your gunfights run it down with the p90 <laughs> that's how you get out of silver right just p90 rush b <laughs> uh you know what i mean so uh, what are tips to catch yourself from autopiling? It's not really like, okay, so there's like this idea that autopiling is bad, right? Oh, not thinking is bad. That's not really true, right? Um, if, for example, if you've ever been in the zone, you know that when you're in the zone, you're kind of like at this nirvana state where you're not really thinking too hard about anything, but everything kind of flows, you know, all this information flows into you and you react correctly, right? Um, and, you know, that's quote unquote autopilot. You're not really actively thinking about stuff. It's more like, what can you do to better your autopilot? And that's where the real problem comes from. Can you, can you, the things you're thinking about, actively thinking about in game, you're doing it so you can make your habits better, right? So for example, um, an example of quote unquote autopilot could be, hey, you just, you know, see a team fight breakout, just walk there and an assassin kills me because I'm walking past a bush or something, right? So um, you're not really like, oh, I need to always actively think and be like, hey, uh, where is everyone when a, when a team fight breaks out? It's more like you do that for like a thousand times in a row so that your new autopilot is, hey, team fight breaks out, oh, glance at the map, okay, Rengar is in this bush or could be in this bush. Okay, we need to make sure we clear this bush first before we can get to the team fight, something like that, right? It's all automatic. So um, it's more like spe specifically focused on certain things in game um, over and over again to make sure it becomes a habit and then move on to the next thing, right? Uh, when enemy bot lane gets tower before plates are down. Oh, what? And comes top? Wait, that's... Wait, before plates are down? What the heck? And comes top? What is the job of the top laner that's matching them? Uh, depends on who the top lane... What the top lane um, situation is looking like, right? If the top laner can't wave clear safely, should they take the risk of the standard tower and potentially gain three man or concede the tower? Okay, so if you're top lane and your jungle is not coming to help to prevent the dive that's about to happen, you just got to leave sometimes, right? 
let's say let's say you're playing Fiora and the enemy Caitlyn Morgana is just running top because they shit all over your bot lane, right? Your bot lane needs to match them so you don't get dumpster too, right? Um, so you need to go bot and tell them to go top. And let's say they don't they don't go top, then you try and get XP or you just don't get try and not get dove, right? <laughs> but uh, usually when uh, you know when you see some kind of disaster like this, it's really don't make things worse, right? Don't get dove, lose the tower and rift herald, right? Maybe they'll do something stupid like start rift herald. Your support bases comes to help and you guys do a 4v4 top side where you guys win or maybe even 4v5 top side where you poke them off it or something right so um keep your options as open as possible it really depends on your top laner like let's say you're playing poppy and they can't dive the sh they can't dive you because they're just it's impossible then you can just sit on the tower don't trade right uh, really depends really depends and what your bot lane is doing um you have two questions he's an 80 main his mmr is fucked uh okay any mmr question is it doesn't matter just win more than you lose that's that's it you don't like, I don't know why people are so obsessed with their MMR. It's, not, it's literally nothing to do with gameplay, right? You don't really care about your MMR. <laughs> how are you? How, how skilled are you as a player? That's, that's kind of the only question you should be caring about. Because your skill as a player will fix your MMR. You know what I mean? So don't worry. This is, this is like, don't worry about that. Uh, time after time, I feel about my... Uh, second question is, time after time, I feel like my game is literally only determined by who tilts first. What can I do when I get a large gold slash item lead to ensure that my team wins and can climbs consistently? This is an interesting question. I have found the same experience when you said um, the game is decided by whose mental is better. So what I did was become like a chat player in the sense that anytime my team were like tilt, like way back when, um, like season four, I would do this season three, season four. I would be like, hey, guys, it's OK. Or I'll tell stupid jokes or I'll lighten the mood somehow. Right. Or I'll be like, hey, guys, don't worry about it. Oh, Jushin, thank you for the sub. Um, but yeah, I would, I would be like, my top laner is 0 and 5. I was like, hang in there, my dude. We'll, we'll, we'll save you or something like that. Or it will we'll say something stupid like, our skill outscales theirs, right? It's just ridiculous. Um, and, you know, kind of being like a babysitter. And that's actually an effective way to climb. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, doctor, thank you for the sub. Thank you for the sub. It's actually an effective way to climb. Uh, where's the proof in this? I got the challenger season four just by doing this, right? And dealing with other positive people. It's really funny, actually. So, uh, you just keep your team from mental boom. Um, so you can, you can do that. You can do that strategy. Otherwise, um, in terms of the second part of the question, what can you do with your lead to ensure your team wins and climbs consistently? It's more like, uh, <laughs> I am Tori K. Thank you for this. Um, it's more like, uh, in, in, uh, the, the part of the map that you're influencing it's your job that things go as well as they can. So what I mean by that is, let's say you're like five and zero, you're playing Kayla Morgana. Again, we swap top side. You instantly die to the Darius that's hiding in the bush. You got a problem. That was your fault, right? It was your job to make sure that doesn't happen because not only does their top laner get the shutdown on you, he's going to get plates. They're going to control top side. They're going to invade. They're going to do Rift Herald. Then they dive mid, right? We got all these, we got all these problems coming on now. Um, so it's your job to make sure no disaster happens on your side of the map. And once you can do that, then the next step is find some kind of advantage. So let's say, for example, I checked out the bushes. Theirs can't be hiding there. Now we're going to go ward the river so they can't run into the river. And then we're going to push out another wave to buy us time so we can start Rift Herald, right? Or we can just poke them, out, poke them down, take the tower. Or we can rotate mid. Or I can just play safe top after I push and let my Tom Kench ultimate. Something like that, right? You're trying to do something productive after you make sure no disaster happens on your side of the map. And if a disaster does happen on your side of the map, like your support is inting or something, then you have to make sure it doesn't get worse. So you don't int as well, right? On a scale of one to Moe's, how good are you? I don't know who Moe's is. Um, I'll put a, I'll say a one, right? One being the best. How do you play around teammates? Not following lane matchups. I mean, it's very much like they screw up. You have to actively, you have to like kind of consciously pay attention to it. So you don't screw up as well. Here's a like an example I had from three or three or four days ago when I went mental boom on stream. My Pike was charging up a hook, so I walked up. He missed the hook. You know what I did? I kept fighting. Right? It's very rare that you know it's not rare. Okay, so it's not rare that people are messing up matchups, right? It's 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 more important that you don't screw it up after your support screws it up, right? Or you punish them after they screw up, right? They miss Morgana binding, the jungle show top, let's kill them, something like that, right? Let's punish, right? So it's, it's more like you have to be watching, uh, watching the abilities they use to make sure you're not trolling lane. Let's say um, you win because Nami wave is going to outheal them. So Nami heals herself and then you walk up. Yo, her wave's on cooldown, what are you doing, right? 
How do you prevent press an advantage in the mid game as an ADC player without much agency to start fights? It's not, yeah, it's very much, let's say, unless you're playing Ash, you're not the one picking fights, you're the one debating fights. Now, what do I mean by that is, let's say you go top and you siege the tower and they come gank you, you turn the gank, right? Your job isn't, let's go look for them in the jungle, but it's more like, let's camp their jungle so they face check us, right? We're not running at them. You can't, like, make them turn around. Like, you don't have the tools for that. What, what are you going to do? Walk at them, right? You, you know, somehow trick them or bait them or let's say, you know, they're super passive. Then you just farm up like a monster and then have, have six items really quick, right? Get your items back super fast. So um, it's very much like keeping, keeping things clean, controlling the area. And uh, when fights break out, you play it properly. How do you utilize the lead as Kaylin? I mean, the same as any other ADC. Ideally speaking, if they can't engage on you, you just go around taking all the towers, right? But uh, in solo queue, it doesn't really happen. So uh, really, it's just set up and or poke them on their tower, right? So a common trick is um, you push, uh, you make sure you can't get ganked, then you EQ combo someone in the face, right? And you do that 10 times in a row, and they lose the tower. Something like that. Um, how do you keep your mental strong enough to climb? Um, at least in lower elos, I feel like shit can tilt you really quick. You're in a game so easily. You can play as good as you like, but you've been losing games because of teammates. Um, so in terms of keeping your mental strong, it's like you have to kind of figure out what's ruining your mental in the first place, right? Uh, so for example, um, the other day I went like mental boom for some reason. And of course I didn't have like enough sleep and I didn't eat. But at the same time, it was like, why am I getting so upset? Right? And it's because even though my support wasn't playing very well, I was upset because I entered immediately afterwards, right? So I was like, oh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe the focus of my anger shouldn't be at my teammates who are auto-filled, right? But rather, uh, you know, how can, I, how can I make sure I play like a monster even with poor teammates, right? So that's kind of, that's like a, always a good focus is always making sure that the, uh, the things you're doing, it's, it's uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, better than the elo you're at you want to be like a better player right so it's very it's very much like oh people always like focus on yourself right it's always hard to do but uh one good one good trick you can do is um making sure that when you see something bad happening in game like the stupid shit you say happens in your games um your your reaction your immediate reaction to it is actually very important in game let's say your blitz misses the most easiest hook everyone goes oh my god how'd you miss and then talent shows up behind us we're like hold up Maybe instead of having that reaction, you should say, okay, Tyler, Blitz missed hook, we, should, we need to back off right now because we missed our, we missed our win condition or whatever. Right? You kind of want to rea react logically rather than emotionally. So that could help a lot. Um, bang, no more memes, please. Uh, yeah. Are you talking about ADC bang? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> What are some ways to gain agency throughout a game? I mean, kind of everything you do has agency in the sense that um, things you do influence your teammates and the enemies, right? So like, let's say you call a Baron, that's agency, right? Let's say you spam off the Baron. Let's say we backping off a Baron, that's agency, right? So really uh, kind of the things you say in chat, like let's say top laner, stop dying. You're fuck you like, you suck, right? Why are you fighting this guy? Um, that's not gonna help, right? So, you know, using the chat, using your pings, communication, and on you know beyond the non-gameplay stuff the actual gameplay itself are you you know misplaying right i mean there's like there's like a ton of ways you can have control over the game so uh i don't know it's pretty much everything you, everything you do kind of has power over the game um if you remove one champ what would it be oh god yumi is uh yumi is a top contender dude anything they've made that's super like dumb to play against Dude, I'll just fucking remove like Zoe, Aurelia, Akali. Like, dude, these dude, get this shit out of here, honestly. Like, I don't want to see this stuff. Yumi, like, super seems super unfair slash unfun to play against, right? Um, especially as an ADC main. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But those champions, uh, pretty pretty dumb. Um, yeah. If you could, um, what are your thoughts on Ali's support? Uh, I feel like she's very strong into hard engage matchups, but doesn't scale well. Wait, that doesn't. Wait, that doesn't make sense though. Do you think an elite support one trick pony can hit challenger? All right, these kind of questions are kind of interesting because um, in Korea there was a elite support that was challenger, right? So I guess the answer to your question is yes. Um, and uh, I mean, it can work, right? I'll consider it to be some kind of like catch support. We need a land cocoon to win, 
right? I don't really see how she's strong into hard engage matchups because their ADC is just gonna flash her cocoon. But I think she can definitely work. Um, you just treat her as like another uh, a Morgana, right? A Morgana that's uh, that doesn't have a black shield. Uh, hmm, thinking, right? And Morgana whose ulti doesn't do anything. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe if she has like more burst than Morgana, I guess. Uh, is there like another comparison with like a uh, skill shot CC um, support? I don't know. But I think if you can play to her strengths, she can work. Um, probably doesn't always work. What helped you climb personally? Just improving on my own gameplay. Um, you know, narrowing down my champion pool. Um, yes, yeah, I think being able to react to things in game logically instead of emotionally is actually really important. So that's that's probably a big one. Anytime I start slipping in terms of gameplay, that's it's probably what's happening is I'm like, oh my god, something 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 happened. Rather than hey, this guy's no flash or um, oh shit, we need to back off or we can push or I don't know something like that. Oh, slow mode? Okay. Do you think players who deserve a higher rank can get stuck in a lower rank due to bad luck only? No. Is there always something they can do to climb? There's always something they can do to climb. Uh, players who deserve a higher rank like, can get stuck to a lower rank due to bad luck only? Like, it, literally, it literally doesn't make sense. Unless you only play 10 games. A whole season. That, I, it just doesn't make sense. Right? That's why you get like a bunch of people who are like, yo, I'm like silver, but I deserve to be diamond. So uh, they get boosting, they play a game of diamond, everyone sees that they're boosted and immediately calls them out because they're hella bad, right? So yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely not true. Um, how important is strong, is strong mental for climbing, asking for a friend? Very important. They like strong mental is important for enjoying the game and life, honestly. Like, I don't know, mental is kind of like, important not even not even like in league like you kind of need it in your life you know what i mean <laughs> uh yeah i think it's very important for just interpersonal relationships or just even um how you how, how you react to things right there's always the idea of your is it locus of control or something like that or it's like you know are you are you upset about the things outside of your control versus versus inside of your control oh shit i, don't, I can't remember how it goes but it's very much like um, um, there's like types of people, one type who like, com who like complains or like, Hey, this is totally out of my control. I couldn't have done anything. I couldn't do anything to stop my teammates from feeding. Right. Versus the other guy who's like, Hey, what can I possibly do to stop my team from feeding? Right. That's like the inner locus of control. Like you focus on what you can do versus the things outside of your control. Like I can't control his character, but maybe I can ping where the jungler is so he doesn't die to a gank or back ping him if i think he's not safe or i'll type in chat to make sure he's not tilting right something like that you can still do things even if you don't have total control over the situation you know do the best that you can right um what pro players are good for low elo players to watch and learn from i should say pick one whose style you admire and you want to play like because i think everyone has a bunch of different styles so if you try and copy everyone you get a bunch of uh sometimes dissenting ideas um <laughs> that don't make sense so i would say uh watch who you who inspires you with this partnership with mobile fire what do you hope to gain for yourself in your community i just thought it'd be fun um and to light a fire under my ass so i can goddamn make some videos you know i think sometimes we are kind of um is it is lazy the word i think lazy is the word right i i, I feel like it's like homework like back in college whereas like once you start it you like really enjoy the work you're doing but like starting is the hard part i think a lot of people feel this way so i'm kind of struggling with that idea like <laughs> before the ama i was like oh i could make it like the youtube video right now and then i was like nah i'll do it later right like that's kind of something i'm working on myself but really it's just this uh this partnership with mobile fire is kind of for fun and to make sure i pump out videos otherwise i'll let down mobile fire right um what was uh oh yeah what was unique about this opportunity i honestly mobile fire was like kind of the place i went to for guides too back in the day even though I didn't really think their guides were very, uh, some of the some of the people's guides were like kind of bare bones. Um, it was kind of like the one stop shop for everything you ever needed to know because it was the it was the first, right? So there's some nostalgia to it. What is the greatest success story you've seen from someone you coached? Um, success story in the sense that you know. I think success can be interpreted in different ways depending on who you are. So like for a lot of people, success would be, hey, who's the guy who went from like bronze to diamond? Because we have, we've had some of those, right? 
But I, so, you know, it's not always about ranking, right? Or how much money you make, right? Um, I think it's more about how, how is the impact you've made on the people in your life slash on your journey, right? So in terms of that, I actually don't really know too much about my students and how they have done um, after they've gone to coaching. But I hope that for my viewers in general, um, you know, the ones who can maybe go from um, being less positive in game to ha having a more positive impact on their teammates, I think that is like the true success story, right? Um, and not really just the, hey, let's climb a bunch of divisions, right? Um, there are some people, like this is one guy who I, is super hype. He, he's an Oceanic a uh, Academy <laughs> uh, professional player now, right? So that's pretty sick. Um, and I've had some students, I've had like a high schooler who went from plat one, he's like D1 now, right? That's really cool. Um, but um, I kind of don't know their impact on the players in their game or just people in their lives, right? So can't really say. Uh, in a team setting, what are some tips to better communicate as an ADC? Uh, think about what what is the most important information you need to do to do certain things. So let's say, for example, we want to your jungle wants to fight Scuttle, you need to say, I have priority or I don't have priority. You're trying to do, your team is trying to do a thing. What is the information relevant to it, right? So uh, another one is, um, let's say you're about to base and you say, hey, I put a TP ward down. Your TP is up in one minute. This ward lasts for a minute and 10 seconds. You have a window of opportunity. So you're like setting it up, right? Like the worst thing you can do is be like, we need a TP now, dude. Like, <laughs> or, or, like <laughs> your top lane is fucking laning. What, what do you expect from him, right? Uh, you need to kind of uh, do a lot of setup and... Uh, and uh, kind of make sure you 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 convey relevant and important information. Like another good one is let's say um, let's say a fight breaks out mid. You're like, hey guys, four v five. That's all you need to say. Everyone knows it's four v five immediately. So that way they may be in the process of looking at that map, but once you say four v five, everyone knows it's four v five, right? Um, so yeah, just really important stuff I think, um, as clearly and as fast as possible. Um, what Rune do you think a challenger ADC could hold up solo queuing to diamond? Probably like 80%, 70%, I would hope. Many ADC players we get coming to summoner school tend to believe their support is determining the outcome of their games and they're stuck due to a lack of a duo. It's because they're kind of bad. No offense. Um, <laughs> sometimes, maybe, but most of the time, just bad, okay? Uh, including me. If I ever complain about my support, there's always something I could be doing better. You guys know. Uh, I'm just having a bad day or something. Um, if you're stuck between recalling with a bad wave when you come back, opposed to risking a death by pushing, which would you do and what would you do afterwards as a result of the previous action? You just got a base. Like, uh, uh, you just never want to int, essentially. You're like, oh, hey, I got away with it. Some games, um, you got to figure out why did you get away with it? Maybe their jungle went top path to top side, right? You need to be able to, you need to be able to reproduce the thing you do in game. Otherwise, it's just not good, right? It's not viable. Well, it's not a viable option next time. Or you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to keep pushing by risking death. Sometimes you throw the game, right? Sometimes you don't throw the game. It's going to be inconsistent every time you get that decision. So you need to somehow find a way to make sure that it becomes a consistent, consistently good or consistently as good as you can make it. Your coaching philosophy based on your videos seems to be focused around the development of habits in your gameplay and using common in-game triggers to form them. What prompted you to take this approach? Was it some epiphany or years of development? Okay. So um, basically, uh, this, this when I, back when I was improving myself slash... Uh, started when I first started out coaching, it was very much the same as other people where they're like, um, hey, I would not have done this. And then they go on to explain, oh, it's because, you know, I wouldn't have pushed because the jungle is missing right now, right? So you're going to get ganked. Everyone understands this process, right? Jungle is missing. You're going to get ganked if you fight. You should probably not fight or you should be ready for a 2v3. And they're like, okay, that's cool. And I realized when I told myself this, I would go like a week of being paranoid of the jungle. And then fast forward a month, I'm like, oh, I'm having this problem again. This happened like five times in a row. So when I was like, wait, why am I still having the same problem over and over and over again? Even though I thought I fixed it, there is obviously something wrong with this idea, right? So how can I make sure that it becomes permanent? So I started looking up like coaching, like a coaching habit or coaching books or whatever. There's this one book. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it talked about like, you know, habits in real life, not even like league. It wasn't even like a league, not really league related, right? It was like habit related and or coaching related. And they're talking about, you can remember, the, you can form new habits by attaching it to something you're already doing, 
right? And I was like, oh shit, like, you know, after you see us, you go look at a minion, right? Or, you know, every time you leave the room, take some trash with you, right? Like I got some trash right here, I, I try and do that, or dishes or whatever, right? To make good habits, right? Or every time you wake up, go brush your teeth, right? Um, so that's kind of, uh, that's kind of uh, where that came from. So it wasn't really an epiphany. It was well, kind of like an epiphany, but I had to go figure out how to fix it. Um, definitely would not have developed it by myself. For sure. What should you do in a team fight? What should you do if a team fight is breaking out and you cannot reach it before it ends? Well, it's very much, you know, what, what's the best thing you can do right now, right? So if you, need, if you can push mid and take tower, go for it. If you can take minions, steal a buff, do dragon, whatever is productive in terms of what your goals are. Um, so yeah, so let's say for, like, let's use an extreme example. Let's say it's a 4v5, 60 minutes in the game. And your team is getting aced and they're all low, right? And you base, and you and you know that if you base and are trying to hold the nexus, you're not going to win 1v5. What do you do? Hide in a bush nearby so you can assassinate someone, and then maybe you can base and hold it, right? You need to do something that makes sense in terms of your overall strategy, right? Um, so let's say your goal, you're super, you're zero and six on Kaelin, and his team fight breaking out top is 4v5. Spam back ping top, try and make as much money as possible so you can be as useful for the next fight, right? As useful as you can be for the next fight. When when, when you were grinding hard for Challenger, how many replays of professional slash rank plays did you watch per day slash week? I'd at least try and do one a day, um, but you didn't really need to do more than that uh, unless you really needed some inspiration, right? You just need, you just watch to see if there's something you can learn from. Like, are they doing something that you want? And uh, if there is something that you want, how can you make a habit out of it, right? Can anyone get challenger in your opinion? Is there certain requirements that have to be met first? I'm not actually sure about this one. Um, you know, I'm like a normal dude, right? I just played League because it was fun, and then I just got challenger because I kept wanting to play, right? So it's not like I didn't feel like my story is really unique or anything, but some people don't have, like, the... Uh, like when I say, me like I'm going to say like mental capabilities, but I don't mean like IQ or anything. I mean, like they, they're like in denial, like, you know, the, the, like the reality di denial guys you see on Reddit or something like those kinds of people, like they can't make it. Right. Um, so I think there's a lot of, uh, so I guess not anyone can get challenger. I think, you know, <laughs> maybe there's the potential, but uh, I think it's unrealistic to say that everyone can be challenger, right? Um, it's kind of a viable, a viable farming lane. I don't know what a farming lane is. Um, against Draven slash Nautilus. My support wants me to ask for more clarification. He doesn't think we'll be down go to farm just by farming under tower. Wait, what? As well as a more serious question on my part in terms of, okay, this is like two part. Let me answer the first part. Okay. Uh, so guys, the, the question is, you just want to farm against a Draven and Nautilus. Uh, and he, your support wants to add, you to ask for more clarification because he doesn't think you'll be down gold or farm just by farming under tower. Well, inherently, you will be down gold and farm by farming under tower because you're going to miss CS under tower and he's getting plates, right? Um, the second part of this is, uh, uh, you know, the thing you want to be doing is like, um, let's say you can't fight them because they're just going to trade. They're going to they're gonna they're gonna all in you with like a flash auto attack from Nautilus or something, right? And you definitely don't want to look for an all in, right? Uh, but it's like, you know, you never really want to just farm, right? You're looking for some kind of, um, looking for your outs or your, your strategy. What's your strategy? Your strategy to just not die, you know, is there anything better you can do, right? If there's literally nothing better you can do, let's say it's literally, let's say your Yumi went mid or something, and there's nothing better you can do, then take that, right? But you should always be looking for the best possible thing you could be doing. And for Yumi and Kaisa, it's like, oh, let's just spam poke the shit out of them with Yumi Q, right? Um, so farming is very much like a, a secondary secondary concern. Um, in terms of a five man, how do you get back into the game if you have no pressure or control of any lane, jungle, objectives, basically how to play from behind? Uh, well, if you lose all three lanes, you just, you know, you did something wrong in the drafting phase or you guys screwed up a lane, so... <laughs> You just lose, but uh, usually you want to play through your winning lane or the lane with potential to be winning. So let's say you have like a zero six of Kenin, um, but your bot lane's even, right? So let's say uh, let's have Kenin just run bot, hide in a bush somewhere, and your bot lane debates a fight, and then you guys surprise five v four them or something like that, right? You need to somehow turn the tides to your uh, uh, advantage, maybe some kind of like um, trick to them. Right? Let's say someone hides in a bush. This is something I saw Metaphor do. <laughs> he, was, he was hiding in a bush next to mid. 
<laughs> so when the enemy team found him, he ran like like he was pretending like, oh fuck, like they caught me. Ha ha. So they chased him. And then they just like died because they were chasing him, right? My team is just like throwing skill shots in their face. Because they're chasing so hard, right? So you can like you can artificially create an advantage like that too. Um yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. You could you wanna come up with something though. So who is the gangplank of bot lane? I don't really know what this means, but uh, maybe someone who can like scale well. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know what this means. Um, Misfortune, because she's a pirate. Uh, hey Saber, th first of all, thanks for pretty much teaching me how to play the champ. You one trick pony. Thanks for the help. I've been able to reach top 500k NA pog. However, I'm not sure when to use W E Q. W and then EQ versus using EQ. When do you think it's worth to place a trap in the combo versus when not to? I almost always. If you think you need to put a trap down, you probably need to put a trap down, right? So anytime you can put down traps, you should always do it. Even if you think you're losing damage on attack speed because these traps are important for making sure that you're controlling space around you and it's damage potential and making sure they can't jump on you, right? It can do any of these things. So if you can ever fit a trap in there, you should do it unless you need those traps for like Zanyas or follow up on stun or something, right? So WEQ is very is very nice, right? Unless the W is never gonna land, right? Let's say you're too late to follow up on the stun, then you know just EQ, I guess, right? But pretty much you always want to be looking to put down traps. Um, favorite champion for each time a lane matchup: poke, catch, etc. Uh, for poke, well ADC, I guess we got Varus, Misfortune, Kaylin. I mean. I'm not really, I don't really play like Puck ADC, but Varus back in the day was really funny uh, with Lethality Varus. What's that, season, is it season, is this season seven? I can't remember. It was when ADC was useless. So, well, season seven, I think, before Ardent. That was, that was really funny. Um, for catch, uh, Ash or Varus are spicy, right? Um, I guess you could say, is there anyone else who exists in this category? I'm sure there are some others. Um, but Ash is really fun when I played Trinity Ash back in the day. Um, all in is always going to be like Twitch, Draven, uh, Tristana. These champions are all nice. I don't play Draven, but I don't know. I like a lot of all in champions. I like the power to be able to turn a fight. Um, in trading, eh, I'm not too big into trading, to be honest. I used to play a lot of like Varus to trade, right? Varus is poke trade back in the day. Uh, but nowadays, it's, it's more about your support is just trading. So maybe Jin with his four shot. What is your biggest change you noticed in your play when you started climbing to Challenger? Uh, when I first got the challenger, it was me typing in chat to babysit my team. That was it. Um, who is the toughest ADC or lane against? Uh, in NA, it's definitely double lift. Uh, in non NA, is some of these Korean players, dude. They're insane. Crap, I can't remember. Oh shit, was it Abel? I can't remember who it was, but there's this one dude who's just insane. I just couldn't lane. <laughs> this man wouldn't let me touch anything, and I was like, dude. I was like, I was like, dude, fuck off, and I like try and fight him back. And then I got dove or something. I was like, okay, I don't. I clearly don't understand landing phase like this guy does. So it was some some Asian dude. Uh, I think it was Chinese. It was probably Chinese. I don't think it was a Korean ADC. Um, how to get as good as you? I'm 100 LP master hard stuck. I'm the same dude. I'm master 100 LP hard stuck. So you're already as good as me, right? Easiest way to snowball the game as a mid laner when all your lanes are behind. Um, well, you're looking to. Depends on what millionaire are you're playing, honestly, too, right? Sometimes you can roam. Like, like, what's your win? How do you win as this mid laner? Let's let's use Anivia as an example. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wave clear mid, look for a fat wall and or good stun in team fights, right? You're not gonna be roaming bot. That's like how you lose as Anivia. Versus you're playing ASO. You need a, you can go god. You need a roam, right? <laughs> After you push to uh, exert your uh, early game influence, right? So it depends on. Who your millionaire is? Are you doing what your millionaire wants? Like watch Dopa, and now he plays Twisted Fate. He's holding on to his ulti until he actually needs it, and then when he uses it, he gets something on the other side of the map, right? Um, so yeah, it's very, very uh, important to play what your champion is good at rather than what you are good at. Um, hopefully, those those things line up. You're good at something, your champion's good at the same thing. That's really good. Um, if you could join any team, which one would you go to? Probably. Uh, uh, if you're talking about NA, Cloud9. I like the uh, the atmosphere um, they have over there. I think uh, being able to have fun with the game is really important to keep motivation um, and morale. So just by past experience with teams. Um, 
like collegiate and for example that i that i played with what are your current goals for yourself in league Ah, uh, good question i think right now we're just like working on content creation uh but other than that i'm not really sure it's kind of like before like before in college this was the goal can i make a living off streaming and making youtube and now i made the goal i'm like oh do, like what's what's the new goal like okay do we, do we like do we make more money uh, would anything change do i even care or do I get more more viewers? Is that that's like the same thing, right? So maybe a good goal could be how can I positively impact the community, right? In the sense of you know back in our talk of uh, you know what is what is success? It's less about like the money and like ranking and whatever, and more about what kind of what kind of person can you be slash what kind of positive impact can you have on the people around you, right? So maybe that's kind of that's like a soft goal, like how can I help the people who uh, watch my content, right? Um, what makes you better than other ADC players in Challenger? Uh, currently not better than other ADCs in Challenger. Which champion would you go bronze to Challenger with if you only use one? Definitely Twitch. <laughs> you just kill everyone, right? Uh, what's the easiest role to climb with? Uh, easiest role? Probably mid if you just overpower your opponent, right? If mid is boom, they just fucking, you just win every fight. Early mid game, maybe even late game, right? I don't know. Uh, I would assume it's mid or jungle, right? You have the most influence um, in the game. Have you heard of the legend of the river shen yes i have it's uh spicy which adcs do you look up to um not really like looking up to anyone when i when i wanted to go pro though i uh, really looked up to the korean adcs and some na adcs like double was really strong I, I i thought sneaky was really consistent right um so yeah um i don't know i really enjoyed teddy and bang's play style so i i watched them oh reckless i really liked reckless's play style too um I was like, damn, dude, this man is like, he's like waiting and then, and then waiting. And then when he finally attacks, it's like, oh shit, you like, you just, you just lost. Like it just comes out of nowhere and he beats you up. Um, that was, I, I really enjoyed uh, watching Reckless. So who's your favorite support champion to play with? Nautilus, cause your auto field support can't possibly fuck it up unless uh, they queue into the wall or something, or I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I, I like support champions that can't screw up uh uh too badly like let's say for example you're playing with a bard all right boys is 1v2 this lane right most of the time or autofill karma they like don't know how to use their abilities oh god or autofill rakan like can we not um something very simple like even leona i i, I enjoy um yeah who's your favorite solo queue support to play with that isn't a pro already uh i don't think i have one do we have one? I don't think. I don't, even, I don't know, dude. It's it's season nine, so we play with a bunch of random people. I don't even. <laughs> I don't even match with uh, a lot of people. Oh, I like I like Alicopter. Um, he has he makes big plays, but uh, I feel bad because a lot of times I let him down. It's very mechanical in nature. Um, like he, he's he's like going for like a fat engage, um, and I miss like a follow up. It's really sad, but uh, he's fun to play with. How can you consistently climb as an ADC? Um. Do only good things. Don't do bad things. What would you like to think? Wait, what would you say you think about the most? Are you talking about in game? Um, probably map awareness stuff. But I think if you can achieve this uh, sense of what's it called? Like if you can get into the zone, I think thinking less is better, right? Why did you decide to not pursue league as a pro? Oh, uh. I was in a relationship at the time and I think it was hurting I thought it was hurting my relationship and uh going pro isn't really going anywhere. So and it was really wasn't making me happy either. Um so yeah, I decided to uh stop doing that. You did the boot camp and everything, always been curious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh you always say default to maximizing income, only join fights when you need to. But how can you tell a f that a fight you need to join is going to start early enough for you to join it, especially if it's not around an objective? Someone is spam ping, I'm gonna engage. You need to be here. That's your cue to go. If they're not spam pinging, they need to engage. Let's say your jungler is like Sejuani. Like, I'm going to catch him on the rotate. You need to come now, right? Or we're invading this red. You need to be ready. I'm like, okay, I'm looking, dude. Uh, versus like they're playing Kha'Zix and like, I'm going to engage, guys. And I'm like, with what? Your W, right? No, nah, go back to farming, right? Or like they're playing Master G or something, right? They're not going to, we're not going to start shit, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, other signs can be like the enemy team is about to face check, so you know you can go, you can you can be on the way, right? After you push, it's the only way to improve mechanically to play more games. You need to specifically um, match. You need to see what's gonna happen, 
and how you're gonna respond and go do that thing. So in chess, it's it would be like, oh, he takes my knight, I checkmate him, something like that, right? In league, it's like he throws this hook at me, I flash it. Except that you have to get the timing down. So that's how you improve mechanically. You're you're trying to specifically do a thing, right? How do you make plays without necessarily playing around your mechanics? Um, brain plays like they literally cannot win beyond like an act of God. They literally cannot win because it's 4v5, something like that. So I just run it down and start this fight, right? Like sometimes I'll use my Kaisa ulti just to take away half of someone's health because I know it's 5v4, that's good enough for value, right? We just need to start the fight. Um, also say we play a lot of aggressive-ish like ADCs like Kaisa. Wait, that's aggressive? Then play a Kate and an Int because I can't walk up the same way. How do I fix that? Um, you need to just learn the champions, I guess, right? So yeah, that's about it. And more experience. How do you feel about a zero ADC? Oh, actually, let me go back to this. Um, maybe focus on what, think about what your champion is good at and play towards that, right? I think that can help fix that. So how do you feel about Azir ADC? Uh, do you think he'd do well minus the scaling issues? Wait, what? Azir scales well. So what are the scaling issues? Um, but no, he does not do well. I think he needs levels rather than money, right? Um, to be effective. Similar to like Cassiopeia and stuff. Um, these champions really want to hit like level 9 really quick, level 13 really quick, you know, max max your Q out, that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you know, you gotta kind of have kind of problems. I mean, you could try. I mean, I, I don't know. I've only tried it a few times, but that's how it felt when I when I tried it. What are some general rules for CSing? Um, wait until the last second to CS. Like uh, most people CS too early. Also, pretend to go for the CS instead of actually doing it uh, to see how your opponent will react. Those are some good general rules for CSing. You tend to have a lot of moments where you recognize your win condition is dodging a skill shot or spacing correctly against someone like Jarvin. Then you walk up too close or see the skill shot and walk into it. What's the best way to improve your questionable reaction time slash mechanics? You're like thinking about it and then you're not actually doing it. So you just need to think about it and only focus on making sure it works because apparently you have some kind of disconnect where you get you get like distracted by something else or something. <laughs> so you're just like int. So make sure that... uh. The thing you're focusing on, if you're focusing on it, it's probably really important, so make sure that gets done, right? What's your opinion on perks impact as ADC on ADC as a role when he swapped? I mean, I don't I don't really know um, how he's impacting other players, but I know that if people can look at G2 and Perks' success with all these different bot laners, then uh, you know, they might think that uh, you know, he might be a style to emulate, right? He's like, "Oh, maybe he's on to something." Right, because he's winning all these games and he's doing really well, and he's a goddamn mid laner swapping to ADC and he's beating all these other ADCs. So he might have a better understanding of the game, right? So maybe people will study him and see how he plays, um, and kind of try and emulate that and or take inspiration for that. So that's that's probably how he's impacting other ADCs. Um, he's going Doran Shield call into call on Kaisa into double range matchup inting. Uh, it can be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It really depends on who I'm playing against. Usually, we always start Doran's Blade. I think Doran's Shield is really doo doo. Um, yeah, almost always Doran's Blade. If you need sustain, take the take the biscuits, right? If you could have one support for the rest of your life, which champion slash pro would it be? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't. I, uh, who's like the least the boring champion? Is there like a least boring champion? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it all, it all kind of sucks if you're stuck with one for the rest, right? Um, in terms of pro, I mean, I don't, I don't know any of these guys, so I can't really say either. Who's your least favorite support champs to play with? Sona is the worst champion in the bot lane, probably. Up with, up there with Jinx. Okay, that shit is inting. Don't pick that shit. Um, and in terms of uh, least favorite, the other uh, is less about the champion, more about the player. If it's auto filled, it's probably doomed. Um, flash on F or D? F. Your D reaction time is not as fast as F. Or at least, that's what I thought. That's, that was my reasoning back in the day. So I put it on F. So, uh, what's your opinion on solo queue versus duo queue? Do whatever you want. It's for fun, right? If I'm doing, I'm playing for fun. I'm not really trying to win. Um, or I am trying to win, but if we lose, I'm not like mad or anything, right? I think that's kind of like the, where things get dicey is when you duel with someone and you guys lose a bunch, you're like, now you guys are upset because you're like, we were playing to win, but now we're not winning. So maybe it's, maybe it's him, you know? Um, I try to avoid those kind of situations. Um, do you think people with duo care are duo abusing and haven't earned their rank? Uh, only if they're doing some disgusting strategy like funnel or something, you know? 
<laughs> but according to the system, they have earned their rank, right? Um, so yeah. But then anyway, Balin takes mid turret, oh, takes turret and heads top. Do you stay bot and try to take turret or do you match them? Uh, usually you just, you know, push out the wave bot and try to match them. Um, unless you're just getting dumpstered and your top lane can handle them. If your top lane and jungle can handle them, then you can just try and recover bot, I guess. Uh, but usually, usually we match, right? Usually you don't want to get into that situation situation in the first place. So, um, imagine double if is the hardest lane for you. Do you feel that other ADC mains don't bring forth that great of a challenge for you in your lanes and Solikyo are normally based on support difference? Yeah, it's more like the the ADCs that shine are the ones that they exert pressure themselves somehow, right? Um, and aren't relying on their supports. And sometimes it's a mistake, sometimes it's not. But you feel the pressure. It's like they're distracting you essentially from you focusing on what you want to focus on, right? And if they can distract you for an instant, and they're jungler ganks, that's like a win in their book, right? Um, or you slip up and you miss cannon or something, right? They're just trying to pressure you so you can't play like relaxed, right? So that's that's kind of, uh, I think that's really a valuable skill um, in an ADC. Not easy though, because a lot of times when you just randomly do that, you int, <laughs> right? That's on Jay's bottom. Uh, I think a champion that also needs levels to make his Q poke really strong. But maybe it could be good. Uh, yeah, I think that champion, I guess you could poke, right? That's about it. Um, maybe you could all in. I don't know. Uh, you could try it, though. I w uh, probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. That's on Twitch and competitive team play. Um, because he can only press, like, one button, he's not that great. So... Um, he's, he's, he's like a brain, he's like a brain play. It's like a brain champion where, um, you need to trick them in order to get something done. And if you can't trick them, you're, you're just donezo, right? For example, if they're picking Braum, they're going to shield every time you ulti in a team fight. You know, somehow trick them into making sure that he's not paying attention to you or he ultis, he, he shields the wrong way or something, right? So yeah, if the team is ready for Twitch to come out, it's not that great. Right. Similar to all these other champions that require on unpreparedness, like Rengar and Eve. You know, you don't really see those in uh, pro play either. So it's just it's just things that need you know, you can't really like buff him because then in Solo it just gets ridiculous, right? Um it's just inherently one of those things where better coordination will make that champion less effective. Third playing Kaelin was wondering if you have some mechanical tips, build path for current game state, blah blah blah. Okay, so here's like a current tip. Take the rune for the lane. So if they're all in, pick all in. Pick an all in rune, like lethal temple or press the attack. Um, otherwise, uh, mechanical tips are really important, like learn how to EW combo, learn how to save your Q to the last second, right? Uh, for build path, can't really go wrong with IE rapid fire, and then you can go from there. Um, I would just suggest uh, watching a bunch of different skirmishes and or fights to see if there are any habits you want to uh, incorporate in your own gameplay. So, that's on right. Attempting to constrain Pike to support only. Uh, I don't see why it should be a solo laner, but yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's fine. You think there is an all-in potential with as early, early game against competent opponents? Yeah, if you can Q flash, um, if you can land every ability, you need to somehow trick them, right? So you'll see like Deft or Teddy or whatever. They'll like walk sideways and Q flash over the minions for these all-ins, right? You need to do something like that. There is potential, but the burden of skill is huge, and uh, usually you're just doomed, right? So, um, yeah, sometimes it's just impossible as well. So, definitely potential, but it's not easy, uh, and oftentimes, <laughs> oftentimes impossible, right? Against equally skilled player. How should I analyze my own replays to improve? Watch your big mistakes. What are the things I should be looking for and thinking about? Yeah, watch your big mistakes. How do I fix it? Using habits. What do I do with my surprise? Zero presence in lane. Literally AFK under tower. Push to get experience and enemy suddenly freezes. Uh, try and get XP. Good luck. What are the worst lanes you can never play? Or hate because it's weak. Uh, Jinx Sona is probably the worst thing ever. Vayne Blitz also comes to mind. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> um, anything that's like, they do the opposite of what you guys want. Vayne Blitz is actually not that bad. Uh, if you guys can get like Blitz's fist off against a non all in bot lane, right? But, you know... Anything that does the opposite of what the other guy wants. Like, uh, like uh, what's another example? Let's say like a purely all-in champion like Tristana with like, um, with like Zerath, right? This, uh, <laughs> Zerath wants to poke, Tristana wants to jump in. Uh, so I guess you can poke him down and then jump in. But uh, if their Balin has some like duo synergy 
like double all in, they're just gonna force the issue. Or they're like double trade, they're gonna trade every time. Um, so they're gonna have some problems. Or double poke, then you're just gonna beat Zeres with solo poking. So yeah. Um, they might, yeah, uh, you feel like most lanes are fine, almost playable. Uh, they don't really, like Sivir Brand, they don't really complement each other in an equal lane. But Sivir is really good at pushing in the tower, it makes it easier for Brand to poke down. And so in a way they kind of work. Yeah, it's very much, can you utilize your champion's um, strengths together, right? So yeah, that's basically it. Sivir is trying to open up a path for Brand to poke and they'll catch people, right? So um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but... Uh, what do you think about a bot lane that focuses on roaming and focuses on getting their millionaire ahead? Yeah, that's pretty. That could be really good. <laughs> Seems like a really good strategy, which is why in solo queue, the bot the supports that roam and successfully get something done are the ones that win, right? Um, why do you hate Jinx so much? You have no agency by yourself. You can't really do too much by yourself, and it's very much a reactive champion rather than a proactive champion a lot of times. So um, I think you're losing a lot of uh, strong habits you could be building, right? Like playmaking potential. Your playmaking potential consists of landing a zap and or flashing in after you get like your passive going or flash in for your passive. It's, it's not very strong. Versus something like Kaisa where you're looking to make a play. You're actively looking to make a play, right? With your ulti. Ulti W combo. You can ulti, auto attack Zanyas. You can auto attack E, auto attack Zanyas, and then flash after, right? You have so many options, right? I think it's good for learning the game. Jinx is the kind of the opposite. What do you do when you smash their bot laners, but everyone on the team just one shots you, even with Hex or PD you get smacked? Um, you just have to make sure you don't get one shot, right? <laughs> uh, somehow, like sitting in a bush or the pink ward or setting up, or maybe farm until you can make sure you don't get one shot, right? But there's always a way they're one shotting you, you need to figure out what it is and prevent it. Like, they're not just randomly one shotting you, right? Zed's gonna ulti and land his shurikens with an auto attack, right? So, oh, you need to flash your shurikens or something, right? Um, you need to solve for how they kill you. Can you do the reaction time ten test on human benchmark? Uh, what's human benchmark? Wait for green. Do I click it? Whew. Pretty slow, right? Well, it's actually average. It's actually average, right? Yeah, League League doesn't really require good reaction time, like CSGO or something. Right? So we're we're very average. So um take that as you will. Wow, we're literally almost exactly average. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah? How do you position slash stay safe in a lane where you automatically push the wave like Sivir Trist? Uh, Sivir, you don't automatically push the wave. Trist, I can understand. Uh, okay, I don't know what's going on. When the enemy jungler uh, has a strong ganking jungler, like Jarvan or Vi, you want to slow push, yeah? Um, yeah, don't just, don't just randomly push, essentially. Um, slow push, keep the wave on your side if you're afraid of a gank. Um, yeah, that's about it. You don't even have to walk up to the wave. You can just hide in a bush, right? If, you, if the wave's in a bad spot, you don't have to walk up to the wave, necessarily. How do you feel about Guardian Elise support? Okay, let's just, like, what is going on here? <laughs> this sounds fucking awful. Guardian Elise support that just builds tanky items and becomes a late-game stun bot? It sounds awful. Uh, as opposed to Electrocute, Frostfang, Elise support. That makes more sense, right? We catch them and do something after we catch them. This is just, like, you catch them and you're just, like, a sad meat shield that's not as good as literally any other catch support, right? So it sucks dick. Um... Unless your repel is insane or something, uh, or you can dive or something, I don't know. Um, I tend, I, I tend to feel like I sucked. I, I tend to feel like I lack damage on Kaisa. What'd you say her power spikes at? Uh, Mira Mana or um, E upgrade? Q upgrade is definitely the big one. E upgrade is another big one. Um, yeah. How do I improve itemization wise? Uh, kind of ask yourself, why do I want these items? Are there any items I can get? Or are there any build paths I can do that are better? Right. Um, that's an IE Essence Kaelin. Uh, IE Essence Kaelin is, uh, is good. I actually am starting to think that you might be a little bit too slow because you have no Zeo movement speed. So I've been, I've been fiddling around more with IE Rapid into maybe another Zeo item or Essence. But, um, yeah, it does fat damage, especially on traps and net and Q. What do you think about W Max Kaelin or three points in Q than W Max? Um, I think it's, it's still good. 
I just do max points in Q because I think Q is really useful. Early mid game, it really helps with your burst. And I would rather have less traps in a bigger Q than more traps in a, in a smaller Q right now. Um, you want to go Halo Blades and IE Essence BT. Yeah, that's the five head build. Uh, it's really spicy. Um, maybe it's interesting. I did it. I did it like a few times. Not bad. Um, but I I would hope the lane is good for it, right? Um, which ADC is best in your opinion when played to its max skill level? I mean, Kaisa is insane, right? Draven, Kaisa, Ezra, anyone with high mechanical skilling, like Zaya, right? Who is the most disgraceful one trick pony champion? Most disgraceful. Is there a most disgraceful? Sona, dude. Holy shit. You're a Sona one trick? No offense. But how do you enjoy that champion? What's going on? See, yeah, I can understand like Akali or Zoe or whatever. They're like strong, right? Or they can be strong. Or um, Aurelia, right? It's fun to play. Dude, some of these champions are hella boring, dude. Right? Yumi, like Yumi? Oh my god. Yeah, maybe I'm just biased because of support. Um, I don't know. What should I do as an ADC where my top and jungle are feeding? I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, is there anything? Are you supposed to be doing anything differently? You're supposed to not in two. Do your best. Do the best you can. So, do you see metaphor play Camille jungle in Twitch Rivals finals? Do you think it's still viable on high low in its current state? Uh, I actually don't know too much about Camille jungle. But it did get like sizable nerfs, right? I think he played it because uh, he had uh, he wanted really good early game um, pressure and or mid game pressure, so he just went around killing people. <laughs> uh, could do a lot of things with Camille. You think? I think he played it really well. Probably not really viable though, and highly low. I think once you fall behind, you're just gonna be useless. Um, and then solo queue is really volatile. So, um, what ADC do you recommend to learn how to play the role? Preferably an ADC for someone with slow hands. I guess you could play Ash, right? Uh, what's your favorite food? What is my favorite food? I like fries. Is that bad? Probably unhealthy. Uh, I used to like ramen, but I ate a lot. I've, I've been eating a lot of ramen as an adult, so it's probably not ramen anymore. Um, what else? What else is good? I'm pretty basic, honestly. So... How many fingers do you have? I have 10 fingers. First steak, medium rare or medium well? Medium rare, I think. Or medium well. Uh, I actually don't eat steak too much, so I can't really say. I'll go for medium well. I'm actually, uh, I got food poisoning when I went to Anime Expo like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So yeah, I'm a little leery of uh, un uncooked food slash, you know, expiring food. What are you doing games when your team's oblivious to win conditions? Like Ali ceasing a Nautilus instead of ne staying next to the Fed servers getting fed dove by a Fed Hecarim. I mean, don't rely on your teammates at all. So I don't really care what they do. I'm just going to make sure I perform based on how they're doing. Let's say your Alistair is going. Let's say he needs to peel you, but he doesn't. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I don't die by myself, right? Good blind pick, ADC plus support. Um, probably strong lane with as few counters as possible. So like... I guess you could try and Caitlyn Morgana. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really know too much. Solo queue. You just pick strong bot lane. The enemy team's probably auto filled, so you win anyways, right? That's pretty irrelevant question in solo queue, unfortunately. So, to get TP on ADC when I see enemy picks Ezra or Yumi, you can. Um, if you think they're gonna take TP and try and not interact with you, you can. If you think there's gonna be some kind of like all in fights going on, heal is probably good, right? You can. You can still take TP. What's your preferred Kaiser build? I like Man Immune. I don't like Storm Razor. I have really bad experiences with Storm Razor, probably because I can't play it really well. Um, but I really like the Man Immune build. So, do you think it's better to solo or duo in uh, solo queue? I think it's better to. Uh, uh, th I mean, do you want to play with a friend or do you want to do? You, do you play by yourself or what? I think it's just <laughs> whatever you think is best. You know, I like playing with people because it's fun. But I'm for a fun player. So, as ADC, should you expect to do most damage on your team most games? Uh, no, but it depends on who your team is, right? Let's say you have like three tanks and like, I don't know, LeBlanc mid is not doing well. I mean, I would hope you have most damage because your whole team is like not supposed to do damage, right? Um, we seen you do duo coaching sessions before. Do you personally advocate for learning as a duo? Or do you prefer to isolate habits for an individual? I think seeing both perspectives is very important, right? Um, especially when you have like an argument with your support 
uh, going to a third party can kind of resolve a lot of problems, right? Because um, you're both probably doing something wrong. So I think dual coaching can be really good because like, let's say, let's say just like ADC coaching with your support in the call, not saying anything, that's already really good because now they're seeing things from ADC's perspective, right? Now he knows, oh, okay, if I do a bad thing, He's going to try and save it by aiming their ADCs so they can't just kill me for free, right? Something like that. Or, hey, we need to focus. I want to kill. I want to engage on this Draven, but their Leona's just going to make a beeline for my ADC. I didn't really think about that, right? And Draven's going to flash after my ADC, right? Something like that. So um, I, think it's really, I think it's really good to see multiple perspectives, right? Um, outside of your lane phase. What's your most common advice during coaching sessions? Wow. Um, let me see. A lot of it is definitely look at the map. A lot of these, a lot of people are kind of oblivious to the mini map. So I think that would probably the that's probably the first one is they're not aware of the enemy team that can't be seen. Enemy team can't be seen. It doesn't exist. So when they get flanked or something, or enemy team joins the fight, there's a problem, right? That's probably the biggest one. The other one is hitting tower and or starting dragon for no reason because then they're just throwing the game usually. How often should I be watching VOD's replays? Um, if you don't know what to work on, that's when you should watch. Or if you want inspiration or you want to reinforce lessons, you can watch like one a day. I used to watch like one dopa a day. Keeps the int away, right? So you can do that. Um, how often you should watch your own replay after every game? You want to check to see how you're doing. Um, so yeah. When you go TP as an ADC, when you're not trying to interact slash, you know, focus on wave control and or um you're playing like s0 you need like that tier slash sheen base um it's very much like you're not planning to interact and you're maximizing your income because you can't you literally can't lose a wave unless there's some big disaster happens bot and you're getting dove uh so yeah that's probably that's probably when i would take tp as an adc you really it was when you don't need to heal too when should you buy tabbies on adc they have like Rengar or something it's going to be relevant guaranteed physical damage that's lethality it's probably when you want tabbies What's your favorite season of League? Let's see, four, because it had Graves. It was my first challenger. So that was pretty fun. Han Sama goes Infinity Edge, Rageblade, Reaver, and PD on Kaisa. Is that good or legit trolling? That seems legit. I mean, the IE into Rageblade is a build, right? I think it's fine. You just get your Q upgrade and then get your E upgrade next. How do you get better at decision making? Uh, you have to, I had to somehow find out why I was losing a bunch of games and then how do I fix it, right? So, yeah. It's very, it's very much a, a trial and error process in the sense of um, the, the, the decision you're making makes sense. Here's like a good, a good tip for you guys who play Slay the Spire. I saw, I was just playing Slay the Spire and I got, I got you know, Typical player, just play a bunch, um, using my own ideas. Got to like Ascension 20, but I would have like a hell of a time beating Ascension 19, Ascension 20, right? It was actually impossible for me. And I read one legit, like one like Reddit guide, and he was talking about how people pick what they think is good overall, but they're not picking to what they need to win the game. And what I mean by that is they need to pick these, like, what is, you know, let's say, uh, let's, let's just use an example. Let's say a certain card is really good in most situations. But against the boss you're going to fight on this level, it doesn't do anything, right? So you're picking it, but it's not for the battle that matters the most, right? So decision-making wise, logically speaking, it didn't make sense, right? You're just picking because you felt like it was good, not because you had any kind of logical reason behind it, right? Um, so I was like, oh my God, you're so right. So I started picking cards to beat the bosses on these levels. And I, I won my, I like, Right when I read that, I, I won Ascension 20 immediately. I was like, oh my god, fucking easy, right? So, uh, yeah, kind of logically, uh, what are you trying to do? Like, you know, kind of figuring out what exactly you're trying to do and exactly the different options you have to get that uh, goal done, you know? Now, do you think any of the crit items should be reworked and what should they be reworked to? Uh, I don't think they should be reworked. If anything, like, I think you should just give... ADC stats back. Maybe that's just me. Um, I th actually, no. I take it back. I think some items that should be reworked are zeal items. I don't know. You know, they they should be ideally of equal strength. Just differs on personal play style, but you know that's not really how it works right now, right? Um, usually, two of them are better than the other two most of the time, right? You never see runons. Like, why would you get runons? Um, 
So yeah, uh, I, I would enjoy if uh, if that were the case. That would be really cool. But that's just 80, that's just, you know, that's just me. Uh, at what solo queue ranks did you get stuck? Uh, what'd you do to climb? D5? Okay, first barrier was like, I think it was platinum. First barrier was platinum. I just played a bunch to get a diamond. Uh, that was back in the ELO system. That was like breaking 2K was awesome for me. Breaking 1900 into 2K, right? And then 2200, I think, right? Um, that was really cool. I just played a lot. Uh, and then I played as few champions as possible too. I had like one champion per role. And then the next uh, rank I was stuck, I was D5. Uh, I think freshman year in college. Uh, I just played a bunch. <laughs> I just played a bunch in main ADC, right? So, and then I got stuck like D1. And then to get out of that, I had to watch my own replays. So then it was D1 to challenge it. I, can, I think I kind of like... I'm pretty sure I like skipped the whole Masters thing. Yeah, Masters didn't exist. It was D1 Challenger in Season 4. So, Masters didn't exist. Wave management tips. Um, the, are you, you know, why are you manipulating the wave the way you are? That's it. That's kind of like... As long as you can think about that and consciously make a decision based on logic, then you're good to go, I think. Um, you start making up your own ideas. Sometimes freeze, sometimes don't freeze, sometimes push, sometimes slow push, right? Um, kind of setting the foundation for a good wave management. How do you 1v9 as an AC? Let's say like you're the only one fed and your team is like one in three, just play off enemy mistakes. You just play these fights as correct as you can, right? Kind of maximize your abilities. Uh, sorry, maximize your ability value. Kind of don't make any positioning mistakes. You know, just play clean, you know? That's how you want to be nice ADC. Are there any seeds that are considered safe ADC slash picks? Like when you're first picking, comfort picks. So that's what I would uh, go for. It. So for me, I just pick Kalen if I have no idea what I'm seeing. If they pick like Ash or Varys or something, I just take cleanse. Like whatever, man. Uh, how would you say you could improve in your current state? Um, probably it could work on a lot of things, honestly. Uh, in terms of outside of League, definitely... Uh, building good habits to, to, uh, help, you know, um, what I think, uh, help mold myself into the kind of person I want to be, right? Um, yeah, definitely working on that. Let's say, for example, not staying up until 4 a.m. playing Fire Emblem and then 6 a.m. reading The Wandering In, right? Need some, like, self-control, I guess. <laughs> um, in League, uh, it would be, like, um, going back to improving habits for example watching replays after every time uh having a goal when we go into game um that kind of stuff you know watching replays making sure our food eating habits are good right um yeah i guess you know we could also look at mechanical ideas i don't know I, i'm very relaxed in the improving the permanent league because you know it's just like whatever now right i guess i could get challenger uh, after a certain point, you just don't care, right? I think, well, I think for a lot of long-time challengers, like, if someone points at you and says, oh my god, this guy's not challenger, like, we don't really care. We know that we've been challenger, like, we can do it every single time. So it's like, oh, do I really care about getting it again? I would just rather be relaxed, right? And just do whatever I want. So, NA for fun, by the way. Um, especially when, when you get challenger, no one gives a shit anyways. <laughs> literally no one cares okay um at least in my experience no one cares they're like you know i see a bunch of your comments on youtube or reddit they're like oh this guy's not even challenger when i have four accounts in challenger they don't say a thing right so it's whatever man don't do it for if you want to like improve or uh, get a certain rank do it for yourself don't do it for other people so are you watching any seasonal anime uh how to pick up girls in a dungeon too uh what are your favorite animes um i have a list on my anime list but Definitely a bunch of top five come to mind, like Kogias, Attack on Titan, like the, the common ones. And then you have like Tsukigakire, which is like a really, probably one of the best, if not the best romance anime I've seen. And then you have like A Place Further Than the Universe, which is like huge emotional impact. I would highly uh, encourage people to watch it. And then uh, older shows like Great Teacher Onizuka. Um, I thought that was, uh, that one was extremely good as well for like, I don't know, just kind of the reaction you get to watching um the, the the show is like makes you feel like you want to be a better person i guess if that makes any sense i don't know um yeah how do i make friends go outside while autistic <laughs> you need to talk to people don't be afraid of talking to people i think that's like a big one um i think in high school middle school and high school i kind of had this problem um but kind of uh what's it called 
kind of getting over this like fear of interacting with people i kind of like developed an attitude of just oh you know you know it could be fun talking to you i i, I thought it would be fun i thought it was fun just like changing up the way my day looked just by seeing just by meeting a new person right like so many times in college i just be like same thing in same thing out for certain days and then it would be like oh shit where are my days going but when i would like talk to someone on the bus or like make a new friend i'd be like hey my day is kind of like improved slash um my experience has improved because i like met someone new slash talked to someone new so i think taking the approach of like um kind of not caring it's, it's like what, what is like a good way to put it it's not like it's not like not caring it's like all people call it like don't giving a fuck like not giving a fuck but it's very much like um uh, don't worry about like the outcome. Like, let's say, oh, let's say like talk to someone, they like hate you or they don't like you. It's like, know that you'll be fine afterwards, I think is a good way to put it. Um, so don't be afraid to go do, go and do things. I think uh, in high school, I kind of learned this lesson of um, uh, the pain of regret will always be kind of stronger than the, the pain of failure because the pain of failure will go away, right? And the more times you fail, the more times you kind of learn from your experiences. And actually, like, even failing can become, like, a dear memory to you slash, you know, bring you a resolve or um, change, change the, the, the kind of person who you are uh, into, a, like, a more, a more uh, not, like, positive person, but towards the kind of person you want to be, right? Failure can actually help you improve. But, like, if you, like, don't do something because you're afraid of, like, failing or you're, like, you know... <laughs> You're, you're just like no, just not doing something because you're like oh what if it doesn't work out or um you're scared or something that's like the worst because you can't you can't go back and change that right uh so yeah i would definitely say um that's how you make friends wow we really deviated from that question huh how many games should you play per day uh however much you want dude right uh play as many as you want you know don't like force yourself to play that's like kind of the opposite of what we're doing here i thought we were playing league for fun guys I thought we we play league because we enjoy it. If you're playing it and you're like don't enjoy it, but you're like I gotta meet my quota of eight day eight games a day. There's, I think there's something wrong with that. Um, how do you play with a passive support when you're an aggressive player? Uh, you can kind of if you know you're winning two v two and it doesn't matter how hard they screw up, like you just need flay, just spam ping, let's go and ping their ignite or something, right? Um, so yeah, it's it's like. Or you could say something like, we're going to try and pressure him on a minion. You can kind of communicate it to your support, essentially. What's the best advice you discovered to climb in solo queue? Uh, worry about yourself. Don't worry about anyone else. Like the whole reaction, like when we were talking about how do we react to a teammate that's not playing well, that's like the exact idea I'm talking about. Like if you react emotionally and be like, oh my God, he missed that. You're missing out on what you're supposed to be doing because he missed it, right? So yeah, focus on yourself. Have you tried using MPV for your coaching sessions? It's a player that can stream from YouTube allowing frame by frame and such. Um, I have not, but I think we can go frame by frame on YouTube, no? I don't know. Why should people play DC? Because they enjoy the role, you know? That's, that's about it. Play the role you like. When you kill the enemy bot lane and the cannon wave is pushing towards you, um, should you base or hard shove it? Let's say I'm Kit Lux. I mean, you can do either. As long as you're not losing minions, you're happy, right? So I mean, I'd be down to just base immediately, right? Basing immediately is not necessarily uh, incorrect. When would you buy Bloodthirster? Probably when um, you need the sustain because you're taking guaranteed damage, or you need the shield because you're taking guaranteed damage, right? Or you're in like a you're in a deathmatch fight with other sustained damage, like um, another ADC is like the other strong guy on their team. It's gonna be a deathmatch between you guys. You know, you need the sustain to win that, uh, especially if they don't have sustain, right? You're always out farmed while playing against Sivir. Hold up. Uh, is it normal or are you doing something wrong? Probably you can keep up and farm, but usually she's going to have the advantage because she just instant clears waves, right? Just make sure you're not missing any random waves. What's your favorite skin? Um, I'm talking about like skin tone, right? Uh, I think favorite skin would be Gangster Twitch. It just feels really good. Do you have any tips for support players that, they get, that die getting caught frequently? Figure out why you're getting caught. That's probably what you need to work on. <laughs> Have you watched slash read JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? If so, what favorite, favorite part? I watched season one and part of season two, I think. Um, I don't know. I just kind of dropped it because 
it wasn't interesting plot wise i just never went back to it i like put a pause on it like put it on hold and never went back to it um yeah and it, it was kind of eh. i didn't really have a favorite part uh what should i do to be pro on league get you know top 10 challenger first then you can talk about it uh may you share your anime list uh it should be on my um do i have an anime list command oh, shit, i don't know if i have an anime list command um should be on my twitch info so you can check it out there are you able to balance school and league eh, i don't think i really balanced it <laughs> I pre I'm pretty sure I didn't balance it well. Did you finish your degree? If so, what degree did you get? Uh, I have a major in computer science, so um, I majored in CS. Best girl in league. Wow. Uh, is there even a best girl in league? I don't know. There's not much. Uh, I think best girl is kind of tied into like who they are as like a, a character, but like we don't really know these characters. I don't think there's too much lore wise slash story wise for us to have a best girl you know ad builds for kaisa you always feel lost on ad kaisa uh you can go ie rage blade someone mentioned it earlier that seems that seems fine you can go man immune rage blade into ad right do you rush man immune oh you can do storm razor too do you rush man immune on ezreal or just tier and then finish trinity slash gauntlet until my tier is stacked up um i enjoy going man immune so i can stack faster right? it's very logical right let's say for example people go tier into trinity on ezreal it's because they if they go man immune first they're not going to get to their trinity spike until hella late right so if they want to be useful mid game they get the tier and then the trinity plus the trinity components will be more useful in lane um and then some people go man immune into gauntlets because they don't really care about the gauntlet yet they just need to make sure the tier is stacked otherwise you do no damage uh so yeah it really depends on what you're trying to do but you can't really go wrong going like man immune first <laughs> Unless uh, you're hella weak and you went man, I, I don't know. Um, it's, I think it's more important that uh, you're playing the champion correctly. What are the best champions and what should you do when playing? I don't know if they're best champions, but what should you do when playing against a really aggressive duo combo like Lucian, Leona, Jin, Zyra? You must always play in Ban Draven, so those champs are always available. Um, so you just, it's the same thing as normal, right? You just play against, make sure you don't fall for their win conditions, right? Let's say. Uh, Let's see, I had a game yesterday, I was playing off stream. It was like Leona something, right? Yeah, I was like Tristana Leona, right? So I was like, oh, make sure they can't go on me. Or if they go on me, I have a, I have a way to beat it, right? So I'll like, oh, take cleanse for a Leona ulti or something, and then we're good to go, <laughs> right? And let's say they're zoning us because Leona's going to E us. We have to debate the E or, uh, or let them zone us, right? Maybe poke them out to debate E or something. Who knows? Uh, one time they aim karma, I just killed their ADC. So, um, tips on fixing sleep schedule. Uh, think about it not as I need to be motivated to sleep earlier. Think about it as do I have the willpower to sleep early, to force myself to sleep earlier because I know it will make me a better person, right? And you know, no one's gonna tell you them. That, no one's gonna tell themselves you don't have the willpower. Or I hope you don't tell yourself that. You guys all have the willpower to do it, right? You have the power. Uh, yeah, go forth and, and take a step forwards to becoming the person you want to be. Um, favorite beverage? Do I like Coke? I don't know why. Uh, I think once I went to college, Coke was like, yeah, Coke is, Coke is good, dude. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I think we're like pretty much done with questions. We're an hour and 30 minutes. Jesus. Hour and 30 minutes, guys. You want this on YouTube? That's hella long. Is there a way to download the VOD for that game? Uh, probably not. Maybe on OPGG. We can do like Twitch questions. When playing early game, early uh, when playing weak early game champs like Twitch, what do you do into high poke comps like Ash Lux? Uh, do the best you can, right? Uh, remember, it's not just like your ADC. Well, who's your support? You're playing. If you're playing Nami, hey, let's trade, right? If you're playing Leona. I'm gonna go in immediately on level three, right? Um, or level four. So it really depends on who you're who you're playing. Last night you carried a game with Kaisa using your advice. Thank a lot. Thanks a lot, man. You helped me improve so much. Hey, man. Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, asking questions. The fact that people are like willing. To ask questions and hear what I have to say is kind of crazy. Um, 
What's the standard beer going Kaisa? I like Man Immune, but I'm not very good at Kaisa, so. What was your motivation to climb so much to go pro? I lost on stage in Collegiate. Like, I don't know, like, Collegiate was, like, for fun, and then we got flown out. I was like, oh, shit, I want to win now. And then when we lost on stage, I was like, I never want to feel like this again, so I'm going to get as good as I can. Um, yeah, that was, like, the main motivation for me to go pro. Uh, but, yeah, I think we're going to call the AMA done here. Uh, thank you guys for showing up. Um, I, I, we hit 50k subs on YouTube. Yay. So no promises or anything, but maybe I'll have something special for you guys. Uh, it'll be interesting for sure. <laughs> it'll be interesting with a capital int guys. Um, yeah, maybe this will be the 50k sub special. Nah, 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 nah. I can't, this can't be the 50k sub special. It was interesting, but the 50k sub special will be interesting. Okay. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess be on the lookout for that. Um, I should make that and uh, I have two mobile fire videos due by Tuesday. That's like homework. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Um, we'll, be on, we'll be streaming tomorrow for sure, especially after I fix my sleep schedule today. Right, guys? Right, guys? Right, guys? Um, yeah, thanks for coming out. Um, I will see you guys next time, yeah?